Well, folks, good morning. Sure is great to see you. So let's worship together. Come into his presence as we sing together. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart, your voice is raised, your voice is raised. Give glory and honor and power unto him, Jesus, the name above all names. Give glory and honor and power unto Him, Jesus, the name above all names. To God. Be the glory, great things he had done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He had done, great things He had taught us, great things He had done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. Purer and higher and greater will be a wonder our victory when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory great things he had done good morning I'm glad to be with you today uh, uh, through video once again we've kind of reliving what we live for a uh, about three months uh, back in the springtime and but we're all thankful to be able to do this uh, even though we can't meet in person this morning and uh, but uh, we will be meeting next week uh, the Lord willing and uh, so we'll look forward to that but today uh, we want to look to the Lord and look into his word and uh, want to receive something from the Lord today and I thought that uh, this Sunday being the Sunday before Thanksgiving that uh, I would turn aside turn away from our back to the future a series that we've been doing and uh, and and just try to give you something kind of related to Thanksgiving and encourage us as we get into this uh, to Thanksgiving and the holiday season uh, just to, to, to encourage us and to just set us in the mood of thankfulness and so we're going to try to do that this morning and I want I want to look into the book of Ephesians chapter number one and uh, our title is this we are so blessed. And aren't we? We're so blessed as children of God. And, and we're going to look at that and just see uh, a little bit of just how blessed we are today as we look into the scripture. But I want to read verse number uh, three uh, and four out of the book of Ephesians chapter number one. Uh, Paul says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him. Blessed be God is what Paul is saying here. Blessed be our Father in heaven. Now the word blessed here is actually what we know as a eulogy. 
Uh, a eulogy is, is what we do. Uh, now, this is not a funeral, but we do this at funerals. We have what's called the eulogy, and it simply means to speak well of somebody in word or to give them high praise. And again, that's what we usually do in honoring someone that's passed away. But here, Paul is giving a eulogy, and he is saying, I am blessing the Lord. I am speaking well of God. I am giving him high praise. And the reason he's doing that, because it says just after this, because he hath blessed us. The little phrase, hath blessed, and this is referring to God's blessing us. It means indeed and in action. So what Paul is saying here, we bless God in word because he blesses us in deed and in truth. And uh, you see, God does more than just speak good to us. He does us good. He, uh, he acts good to us. He provides for us. And so we speak well of God because he does well for us. And um, I had the privilege to go to Niagara Falls and uh, it's, it's such a great wonder, uh, uh, such a great uh, a scene of nature. And uh, as you walk up to Niagara Falls, there is a mist in the air. And this mist is caused from all of the abundance of water that flows over the cliff into the basin uh, below the cliff. And uh, tons and tons and tons of water flow over Niagara Falls every minute. And, uh, and then this creates this mist that rises up. And as you get close to Niagara Falls, this mist is in the air. And I like to think of God's blessing and our praise. Uh, in relation to that. You see, all of that water that flows over the falls is like God's blessings toward us. And then that mist that rises up from the river, it's like our praise that's returned back to God for all of his abundance of blessings that he flows uh, into our life. And so we bless him in word. We speak well of him, and we should, because he blesses us in deed and in action. And so I want us to see a few things about these blessings that God has given us. And as we go into this week of Thanksgiving and, and into the holiday season, uh, let's tune our hearts in to God and be thankful and, uh, and praise and worship Him uh, throughout this holiday season. But notice, first of all, the source of this blessing. The source is God. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. And so it is God that does the blessing. Our blessings come from an unchanging God. James said this in chapter 1 verse 17, every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. Our God is an unchanging God who is consistently caring for his children and providing blessing for his children. And the truth is this, we're going to see he's already provided blessing. A lot of times we're not living in the realm of his blessing. We're not experiencing his blessings as we should, but God has provided those blessings for us. Every blessing we need, we have in Christ Jesus. Which brings us to our next point, the surety of our blessings. And that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So as long as Jesus is on the throne, as long as Jesus is alive, God's blessings will be available to us as his children and they are available to his children. So Jesus makes that sure. You don't have to worry if God's blessing is gonna run out uh, for us as his children because Jesus has secured that. They're, they're found in Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. And then look at the scope of God's blessing. He said he has blessed us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us 
the saints, his children, you and I that know him as our Savior, he has blessed us, and it's all of his children. His blessings extend to every one of his children, excluding none. So you see, there's no reason to fret. There no, there's no reason to look around and, and see somebody you think is doing better than you, or, or maybe they're you, you feel like God's doing more for them than he is for you because God's blessings are for you. Again, you may not be living in that realm of blessing, but, but God's blessing is there and it's up to us to tap into those blessings. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So, uh, but the scope of his blessing is all of his children. Uh, they, they extend to all of his children and God's blessings extend into all situations. Sometimes we think we're only blessed when things are going good, but friends, we're blessed when things aren't going so good. God's blessings are still there. And God's blessings go deeper than just material things. Uh, and sometimes that's the only way that we think about blessings. When we get this or get that or something great happens, you know, we get a new house, new car, raise, uh, raise at work and those things. And those are blessings. And we should thank God for those. But God's blessings go much deeper than outward things. The, the, the great blessings of God and the, 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 the weighty blessings of God are inward. And man, we can experience those blessings no matter what is going on. And Paul is the prime example of this. You see, writing this letter, Paul is in prison. It's what we call one of the prison epistles. Paul is in jail as he's writing this letter to the Ephesians. And, and isn't it amazing that in the onset of this letter, sitting in jail, Paul says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's praising God. He's blessing God in prison when things aren't going so good because God has blessed him. You see, God's blessings didn't end just because Paul's in prison. Paul said, I've still blessed God. And, and Paul gives us the reason why he's blessing God uh, on through this book of Ephesians that we will see again in just a minute. And so uh, one writer said this. He said, Paul, here in this book of Ephesians, rises above the gloomy confinements of his, of his prison cell to the Mount of Transfiguration. And there he finds himself with the Lord, blessing the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? And so that's the scope of his blessing. It's us, all of his children, into all situations of life. And so now look at the supply of God's blessing. He said he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Man, I, we, we can't fathom the depth of that. But as I said just a minute ago, here in this book of Ephesians, Paul lays out some of the wonderful spiritual blessings of God. And, and if we can tap into this, my friend, we can enjoy God's blessings uh, in our Christian experience. And we can enjoy them consistently. And we won't be, uh, our lives won't be uh, up and down and in and out uh, due to what's happening. But if we tap into God's Word and, and see who we are and what we have and what we possess in Jesus, friend, we can experience God's blessings all the time. And, uh, but it's all of His blessings. He said He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Let's look at some of those blessings real quick here in the book of Ephesians. In chapter number 1, we see the blessing of security. Isn't that great? Uh, you know, some people, some people go through their Christian experience and, uh, and, and we understand we've got brethren, good brethren that disagree with us here, but I'm glad that I, I, I see the truth that the Holy Spirit has set for us that we are secured in Jesus Christ. We're secured by the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible says here in Ephesians 1, uh, beginning in verse number 11, he says uh, uh, that God has has uh, sealed us. He says, in whom you've trusted, uh, in whom you've also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the praise 
of his glory. So according to these verses, God has sealed us by the Holy Spirit and, and, he's, and he's done that until the redemption of the purchased possession. We are that purchased possession. That is our redemption. Christ purchased us and we're the redeemed. And so until that purchased possession uh, goes to be with Jesus and, and, is, and totally uh, redemption is complete in Christ, then we're secured. He secures us until we see Jesus. And after that, if he, and one, one fellow said, if he gets us that far, we can get the rest of the way on our home. Uh, we'll be in heaven. And uh, that, that, of course, that won't be so. Really, he, his grace is what's going to keep us throughout eternity. And, uh, but we're secured in Jesus Christ. And man, when you see that and you get that, and understand the depth of that, that we're saved by grace through faith and that uh, and nothing else and that alone, uh, plus nothing, minus nothing, then we can understand and we can, and we can dive into the depth of that, of that blessing of his security. We don't have to walk around each day wondering and worrying if we're going to lose it. Now, that doesn't mean we should go out and sin. Of course not. And uh, we, we don't have time to get into, get into that, that, that aspect of, of, of the argument against uh, uh, the, the doctrine of eternal security. But the truth is this, we're secured. And we don't have to go around with our fingers crossed and worried. We can rest in Jesus in the fact that He has guided us and He is going to take us home to heaven. And so uh, that's in chapter number one. Chapter, also in chapter number one, there's the blessing of, of knowing that we can experience all that God has provided uh, within His inheritance for us. Listen to what he says in 1.18. Uh, Paul says he's praying here. He's praying that we that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So according to this prayer, we can know what is the riches of our inheritance which is in the saints. We can know the fullness of, of what God has provided for us in our inheritance. In chapter number two, we see the blessing of grace. The blessing of grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Isn't grace wonderful? Well, Paul tells us in chapter number two that our condition prior to God saving us is that we were dead in sins, dead in trespasses and sins. We walked according to the course of this world. We had no hope. We were, we were alienated uh, from the life of God. But God, for His great love, Wherewith he loved us, Paul said, hath quickened us together with Christ, for by grace are ye saved. He says that to us in chapter number two. So God's grace, friend, has lifted us out of the miry clay of sin, has, has, has brought us out of spiritual deadness and given us life in Christ Jesus. And one day, friend, he is, he's going he's to present us to himself. And, and, and he said on down in, the, in chapter 2, he's going to show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us uh, through Christ Jesus. Throughout the ages to come, we're going to experience and we're going to be mindful of that marvelous grace that saved us from our sins. What a blessing. There's no greater blessings than that. Uh, if you move on into chapter number two, and we could, we're just skipping over a lot that we could find in these chapters, but chapter three, there's the blessing of the fellowship that we have that was hidden in God from the foundation of the world. And that fellowship is the church. We have been brought into the church of the living God, Jew and Gentile alike. Now, uh, make up the body of Christ. There's no difference between the two. And we get to experience the fellowship of the believers in the church, whether it's Jew, Gentile, whether it's bond or free, uh, no matter who, if, you're, if they're saved, if you're saved and in Christ, you have a fellowship to join into and to be a part of. Listen to what Paul said. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, 
how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy, unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And here's that mystery, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. What he's saying is, here's the mystery of the church, that the Gentiles would be fellow heirs with Jews and the Jews would be fellow heirs with the Gentiles and they'd be a part of the same body, the body of Christ, and that we would be forsake takers together of his promise in Christ by the gospel. All come to Christ today through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we do, when we trust Christ, we receive the gospel, uh, then we're part of this great fellowship we call the church. What a blessing. Then in chapter number four, there's the blessings of the gifts of God given to the church to strengthen us, to, to, uh, um, to, to get us uh, grounded and settled in the faith. He gave to the church apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And so he gave us uh, gifts to help us grow in our Christian faith, to grow into Christ and to be, uh, and to be, um, uh, um, to be used of Christ in his body and to be a blessing to others. And so what a blessing. In chapter number five, uh, this is one of the greatest blessings there is. Uh, we find the filling of the Holy Spirit. In verse 18, Paul said, Be not drunk with wine, we're in this excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Today, not only can we uh, have salvation and know Christ, but we can possess, uh, we, we do possess the Holy Spirit, but, he, but we can have the blessing of Him filling us and working through us and using us in the wonderful work of God. And he does that through filling us and, uh, and, and working through us, through his filling. And so we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to allow him to, to possess, to have all of us, to, to, uh, to, to rule our life, to, to have the say-so in our life. And we walk according to him and his leadership and, and according to his word. And so what a blessing to not only possess the Holy Spirit, but to be able to be filled with him, to know the fullness of God and what he has for us. And then in chapter number six, uh, and again, we're just skimming a few, a few blessings through this book. There's the blessing of the armor of God. You see, God didn't leave us uh, he didn't leave us alone. He didn't leave us unprotected. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a warfare we're in. Paul said in chapter 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and powers and uh, evil, evil wickedness. And, uh, and we wrestle against the, the spiritual world, uh, Satan and his, uh, and his cohorts. And so God said, here's what I have for you. I have an armor that you can put on. I have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. I have some shoes for you. I want you to put on your feet uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, I, want you I, want to have you I want you to have your loins girt about with truth. I want you to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We have the weapon of the Word of God to help us as we go through this world and we fight this battle uh, against Satan and, 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 and his uh, and his allies. And so what a blessing. What a blessing God has given us. So you see, he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And friends, I've just skimmed the surface of what God has done for us. And um, so Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ because he's blessed us. Isn't that wonderful? And so let's look at the supplier of the, of the blessings. It's the Holy Spirit. He, says, he said that we're blessed with all spiritual blessings. These blessings come through the agency of the Holy Spirit. He works in our life in providing these blessings and in revealing these blessings and help us un, helping us understand these blessings that God has for us through His Word. And then the grounds of God's blessing. Listen, God, uh, we didn't earn this. 
We didn't earn God's blessing. Now, I know, I know to, to experience God's blessings, uh, there is some contingency on our part. Um, we have to, we have to uh, study God's Word to understand and to dive in the depths of God's blessing and to get the truth of these blessings that we can apply them to our life. But friends, listen, God has provided us these blessings because He loves us. God has got everything we need to get us through this Christian life. We just have to tap into that. But the grounds of His blessing, He said He blessed us in verse number four, according. He said He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. So you see, way back before the foundation of the world, God knew you were going to be His child and therefore provided every blessing that you would ever need as you walk through this Christian life. They're yours and they're mine. We just have to tap into them. And so we're going to see that in just the end. The purpose of His blessings. He says that we should be holy and without blame for Him, before Him. Isn't that good? God blesses us not just so we can whoop, uh, hold our hands up and hoop and holler. God blesses us so we can live a life for Him, that we can live a life representing Him, a life that's lived in victory before this lost world, and a life that shines a light into those, to those who are in darkness that they could see the, the blessing and the glory of God in our life. And that's why He's blessed us. He's blessed us so we, in turn, could reveal Him. To this world. And in that one of these bless us with all spiritual blessings. So how do we tap into these blessings? Well, to tap into them, you gotta first of all, it's through prayer, it's through the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, Ephesians 5 18 is, is, is a it's a pivotal verse in this book. It actually uh, when he says be filled with the Spirit, it reaches back into uh, into the um, the previous chapters, and it's through the filling of the Spirit that we can experience all the blessings that God has for us, that we can understand these blessings, that they, they can be applied to our life, and that we can experience the depth of them. That's through His Holy Spirit. So uh, how do we experience God's blessing? Being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're, if you're not surrendered to the Lord holy today, and you're not uh, allowing Him to have all of your life, do that today. Say, Lord, fill me. Lord, I, I want to move myself aside and put you on the throne and let the Holy Spirit uh, have His way in my life. And I want to follow you uh, through your Spirit and by your Spirit. And, uh, and then the Word of God comes into play. We have to read the Word of God. You see, without the Word of God, I could have never shared these blessings with you today to know where we stand in Christ Jesus. So you must get in the Word of God. And we've been reading every day as a church, every, every weekday through the church. And I hope you've been reading through the weekend. But we've been uh, uh, reading chapters every day through the week. And I hope you've been doing that with us. If you hadn't, when we, as we start the new year coming up uh, just down the road, uh, hey, get in there and let's read through the Bible. Let's get into God's Word. And it's through doing that, through the Holy Spirit, uh, by, by way of the Holy Spirit, God will reveal His Word to us and reveal His blessings to us. And then prayer. Prayer is a part of enjoying the blessings of God, coming to God, uh, making our requests known to Him, uh, making our supplications to Him, and praying uh, for God's blessings and praying for ministry, praying for lost souls, praying for others. And it's in through, through these things then we can experience all the blessings of God. And uh, it's a lifelong endeavor, uh, understanding and experiencing and knowing God's blessings. And so, I want to leave you with this thought. We are so blessed. Let's be thankful. Let's, let, let's do as Paul. Let's say, blessed be God. Let's bless Him with our words and with our life because He has blessed us with abundance of blessings. And so, so uh, today, if you know Christ as your Savior and you haven't been experiencing His blessings, surrender, him, surrender to Him today and get active in your faith, active in the Word, seeking the Holy Spirit to fill you and surrender to Him. And you will experience life that, that, um, that nobody can understand apart from a Spirit-filled Christian. You'll understand what Jesus said, that abundant life in Christ. And if you're not saved today, would you call on Jesus? Would you trust Him as your Savior? Because without Jesus, there, are no, there are ultimately are no blessings 
there's only an eternity in darkness and in suffering in a place called hell. And so if you don't know him as your Savior, trust him as your Savior today. You can do that by calling upon the name of the Lord. Jesus said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So today, if you don't know him, confess to him that you're a sinner. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. But Lord, I believe today that you died on the cross for my sin and you took the payment for my sin. And today I receive that. I accept that today. And I ask you because of what you did on the cross, forgive me of my sin and come into my heart and receive Jesus today into your life. And he will forgive you and he will give you peace that passes understanding and then you can begin to experience the spiritual blessings of God. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, please just be praying through the week. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, this week, uh, we won't be, uh, uh, we'll be, uh, won't be at service on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to pick back up next week. Our plans are, the Lord willing, to be, be, be back meeting in person next week on the 29th. And so until then, everybody have a great Thanksgiving. And we'll look forward to seeing you then.